What's up everybody, Paul Carl here. Today I'm doing a little cribs tour of the office setup and I'm going to show you my process from both the physical and the digital perspective. Alright, I'm speeding everything up so you don't have to watch this in real time. But unboxing took 5 minutes, it was 12 lots of 100 cards and I got them in, they were real nice, all separated by tabs. I put them into this tray so that I can move them around as needed and I have two rows because 100 card stacks are pretty big and this lets me put the full stack in one column of this tray. Once the tray is all ready, you'll see it move right now to the scanning area. So I have the tray right there, I scan everything in order and put it right into the box which you can see is on my right hand side. Um, I'll show you where that box is when we get into the tour after all this fun stuff. Um, but yeah, it takes about it takes two to three minutes per hundred cards to do the scanning and what I've been doing is I've been feeding them like one card at a time or a couple cards at a time depending because sometimes the cards stick together and you'll have to like delete the scan and then find those two cards and rescan them if you've done this kind of stuff before you know exactly what I'm talking about uh, but anyways that takes so much more time to go through and fix I'd rather just avoid the problem in the first place so that's why I'll feed them the way that I do it's disappointing, but it does save time doing it this way versus the other way, for me, at least. I don't know, maybe if you have a different scanner or a better scanner, it might work better. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this is um, three lots I scanned in, and it took me uh, about nine minutes. With ChronoCard, it will automatically collate my scan groups into like a box number, row number, and letter tab, so that way I know where the card is, or where the lot is when it sells. Um, I use that as my inventory management system, and when that box is filled up, it goes right back on the shelf with all the other listed inventory, which we'll see in the tour later. Um, I, I'm saving that for the end, just in case I ramble too much and get off topic. That way you guys can see the important stuff first here. <laughs> This is what the software side looks like from ChronoCard. Um, I sped it up. If you want to see what ChronoCard is like a little bit more, I have another video on that, um, on how to list really fast, something like that. What I do while I'm scanning the cards is after each 100 card lot is scanned in, I'll open that lot in ChronoCard and I'll set the price while the cards are fresh in my mind. And then I save and close it and ask the AI to identify it. What we're looking at here is after the AI has done its work. Um, so we're not going to sit in real time and watch the AI <laughs> and wait for it. Um, but anyway, yeah, so while that's happening, I usually do other stuff like scan more cards or work on something else, check my email, blah, blah, blah. Um, now that the AI is done, though, I go in, I make sure the names are all correct and by doing that bulk change. And then I'll export it so that I can use the export with my app to create the um, the eBay upload CSV and do all the image editing. Everything's automated. It's really cool. We'll see what the listings look like in just a little bit. This is the app here. Um, this is my desktop version. The web version still in the works. Sorry it's taking so long. Um, but anyway, what it does is it goes through and it edits all the images for me. It creates the new images, adds the watermarks, all that good stuff. And then it builds out the eBay listing so I can upload the CSV. Now, um, I have some versions of the script, especially for like the singles, which, which is available. You could use a single script if you wanted to. So hit me up if you're interested in that, especially if you have a card shop, I can save you a ton of money. Um, but yeah, what, what I do here is I manually upload my images because I like to upload the CSV after the images are finished uploading. And this allows me to see when they get uploaded, uh, with the app that does the uploading automatically you don't see the progress bars you just kind of like run the app and then wait a little bit and then you can upload the csv but it saves you this extra manual step um i just personally prefer to do this manual step which is kind of weird to say because if you've been following the channel you know i like to automate pretty much everything <laughs> once the app's done running we just come here and we go to the reports tab in ebay upload a template and we're going to upload the upload csv that the script created and what that's doing is it's telling eBay where all the images are, what all the detail is for all the listings, all the item specifics, all that good stuff. And I put it so that it goes to my scheduled listings because the way that the lot app works right now, there there isn't like a title algorithm to optimize everything for me. I actually like mess with it a lot depending on what I'm scanning. Usually it's player lots like these. 
Um, but I'll come in here and I'll fix the titles if there's a little error in it, like Panini Prism was cut off here. And with the scheduling, I also can determine when I want them to go live. I think I set these ones to go live immediately, but if I've done a lot of listings in one day and I'm probably not going to list for a few more days, what I'll do is I'll just schedule some for the next couple days so that things are going live every day. And here's the listing that gets produced by the script. It has my, my logo up there, some little call to action about combined shipping for when I run auctions. I like that to be there so people know. Um, it, this is a cool feature. This is, I think, what really adds a ton of the value is the, the scans of every single card so that people can evaluate the condition and know exactly what's in the lot. Because as somebody who sources on eBay, when I'm buying lots, I really have no idea what I'm getting most of the time and very little clue what kind of condition it's in. So it's kind of a gamble. And what this does is it gives customers the confidence to know exactly what they're getting and exactly what kind of condition it's in. It's a huge value add. And then with the AI description, listing every card in the description, it creates um, more opportunities to be found because of the SEO. Now let's get right into shipping. Shipping is... It's most efficient when you're doing multiple orders. Uh, I only had one order, so you guys kind of get to see like the dumbed down version. <laughs> There's a good way to do this where um, you kind of do it like an assembly line, similar to my eBay standard envelope uh, shipping video, which you should check out if you haven't before. Um, the way that I do this with multiple orders is the same concept in that other video. The sale was one of my consignment sales. It was on the low end, which is $30. That's that's the minimum I shoot for for a lot. Um, so the profit was 18 bucks. I split it with the client in this case. So that's $9 for me, five minutes of work. Works out to about $108 an hour in profit for this type of activity. So when I sell something for the 35 or the 40 or like a $90 lot, it, it's crazy how efficient you are with your time and how much value you get in exchange for giving this kind of value for customers. All right, now that you've watched the first part of the video, we're gonna get into a more in-depth tour and then some discussion on some of these topics. Um, one thing I hope that you noticed in the first part was that everything is centralized around the computer workstation. And what that does is it eliminates the need to get up and move around to do different tasks. You can do all the tasks from one spot. All you have to do is rotate the chair. Um, everything that is needed for every task is within arm's reach, with the exception of putting away stuff and bringing out stuff that needs to be worked on. So, for, for example, if I'm going to scan cards in, I have to go bring out the box that they're going to be put into when they're done being scanned. If I'm going to, you know, unbox an order, I need to maybe bring out my bulk box to put all the bulk into. Um, so there, there are some scenarios we have to have like a little bit of a setup and a teardown, but it all happens in a centralized area and everything that is needed tangentially to those tasks is within arm's reach. A lot of people, they kind of work in chaos. If you've watched some other seller videos, you'll see like piles of cards everywhere, boxes of cards everywhere. Nobody knows what everything is. And I mean, that's, I think that's normal when you buy a big collection and you're like just starting to go through it. But what happens is that people touch cards multiple times. And one of the things I've always been saying is that you only want to touch a card twice. Once when you get it and you list it and the second time when it sells. And I mean, that's not always possible. So like I'm if, when I take out cards, like I have my little booth tray here. I touch the card, it's going to the booth. I put it in the booth tray. I have to touch it again when I put the sticker on it and stick it in the top loader. So there are some steps that are unavoidable but anyway that's besides the point i'm getting off topic we'll talk about the booth stuff in a minute um but yeah you you don't want to just have cards in limbo where you don't really know what you're going to do with them and they just are sitting in a spot where you don't you don't you don't have a spot for them Every card that I get in, it has a spot where it belongs once I unpackage it. It's either going to go in like the Com C pile, the booth pile, the singles pile. It's going to go into the lot tray and be listed immediately. There, there's a destination for every type of card. And that prevents you from having these cards just building up in piles all over the place. Or if you sell other stuff, you know, you might have a death pile of clothing or whatever it is that you sell. Uh, you need to have a system in place so that you know where these things are going to go and what's going to happen to them. All right, this is my tray for my booth stuff. I have my top loaders, um, penny sleeves, and these are cards that need to be like priced out. I put them in the slot, depending on what I'm going to charge for them. And then I put stickers on them and top load them. And this is something that I do to move lower end singles that I think will sell relatively quickly. 
and I, I do it while I watch TV with my wife or we talk or hang out at night. And, um, yeah, it's something where I, I don't look at it as work time. It's like something that I do to keep busy while I relax. Cause I'm, I'm the type of person where if I'm like watching TV or whatever, I need to be doing something simultaneously. And this is something that I enjoy doing while I relax and it's a nice way to make a few extra bucks. I did, um, off cards like this, I did $600 in revenue at, uh, my antique mall booth in a town with uh, a population of under 2000. So it's been really good for me. I, I kind of want to be in a bigger, bigger booth at some point, like a bigger um, venue in a higher population area. But that's besides the point. I've been doing more like uh, photographs and stuff and other things. I got like some records here and these are picture frames. Like sometimes I'll put stuff like this in a picture frame, like from the dollar store. Uh, it, it makes it look a lot nicer and sell faster and you can bump up the price by like two bucks at least to cover the cost of the frame. I'll do a video just on the booth at some point. Um, but yeah, over here, this shelf is where I have all my listed inventory down here. Um, some of it is overflow bulk that I still got to put in box to sell. Um, this is like my overflow for my cards from lots I buy. Like if I have leftover cards, I got some leftover Barry Bonds cards. So let's go there. Maybe I'll buy, buy a lot where I have 80 Barry Bonds cards. I get it at a price I need and I can use these cards to fill that out to get to the hundred. That's the idea with these. And up here, this is just stuff that has to be processed at some point. It's kind of like the busy work stuff. Like these have to be sorted. Um, I mean, I guess I could just do lots of just random vintage, but that's not as appealing for customers. And I want my lots to appeal to customers as much as possible. So I'll probably sort these out by set. It's all my vintage. Um, this is where I've been kind of accumulating all of the like uncut sheets and like oversized cards and tickets and random stuff like that. Those are going to be lotted up too once I'm pretty sure that I have all of them here. <laughs> and then I have another project here. Um, this, these I was going to send to Comp C but they're going to charge me three bucks a card to list these. So I'm just going to take, I might just take photos of these the old fashioned way and list them as a lot that way. Um, but yeah, and here I sell these boxes of top I fill them up. I think I get like between 30 or 35 bucks shipped for them. So when I'm processing cards, if they come in top loaders, I don't send customers used top loaders. I send everything in brand new, clean stuff. Um, you'll see the reasoning why if you watch the branding and marketing video. Um, but so when I'm working on taking cards out of top loaders, I'll bring this box over to the table and I'll fill this up and sell the top loaders, make a little extra money and keep them out of the landfill. These boxes here, these are all my bulk boxes. This is um, just a mix of sports cards. And then I have them by sport, by team. Uh, just depending on how cards come in from uh, some of my clients that I can sign for. Um, but yeah, these are all listed and ready to go. My goal is to try to keep this thing, you know, to my little slanted ceiling here. I want to get, be three high at all times. Oops. That's how I was recording earlier. <laughs> uh, I got some extra bulk from some of my buys. Uh, I'm going to eventually, this will just be, I, I forget what's in here. Oh, this is my little misprint collection. I'm trying to save up misprints to do a cool lot of those. Um, but yeah, and then I have my Comp C box here. These are Yu-Gi-Oh sleeves that are listed. But eventually what's going to be here, um, are, it's going to be three, three rows. I'm going to have baseball bulk, football bulk, and basketball bulk. Maybe once I sell all those, I'll start saving hockey up. Um, this spot I keep reserved because this, when I'm done... Put it here keep my table nice and clear uh but yeah what happens now let me show you while we're here um so these booth cards and this fills up they come out of here they go into here to get priced to go to the booth when the comp c pile fills up they go in the comp c box here um, keep a running tally of how many cards are in the box so that the submission is quick and easy i just put them in here update the counter Put it back here and then down here i have three boxes full i label them on the side so they're all ready ready and counted these are some extra com c sized boxes I like the 550 count boxes for that because then they fit nicely into this other box that i have a bunch of for um, the cubic uh, the cubic shipping rate so i can send them the com c really cheap these are binders I got to process. They just kind of live on the floor right now. <laughs> I don't I don't want to take cards out of sleeves. It's just not worth the time. So those are probably going to sit there for a while. Or maybe I'll just sell them like with photographs of the binders. I don't know yet. They're just going to sit there until I do figure that out. Um, 
But yeah, that this is an air conditioner. I gotta take to my brother in law. But what it serves is, as right now is like another spot to set boxes. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. I can have my main box up here. And then if I'm like if I have my uh my overflow box, would it go the Paul box there? So if I if I have a tray of lots ready and I'm short, I can keep my Paul box right there and pick cards out of there to fill out the lots that might be missing. Um, yeah, I got miscellaneous stuff in here, rubber bands. I don't use those much anymore. Um, all different shipping supplies. I have slabs that are going to go to Comp C, get stored in here. Um, these are cards that I'm going to grade eventually. I just kind of stockpile them in there. I keep the flatbed here. I take it out when it's necessary. Um, I've been using the flatbed for when I list singles. I'm going to list those, that set too. But So I, I keep all the singles I'm going to put on my eBay. Cards I think I'm going to get like $10 or more. Or like the Sam Vincent and Mark Jackson. Those cards, they sell really quickly. So those ones I'm going to put in as singles. I just kind of let that fill up because I want to do as many as I can at one time. Um, yeah, I got all my different tape all my different tapes tape gun having these hang is really nice because i can just pull it off um real easy don't have to get up some back stock of my supplies um i got more supplies over here different top loaders sizes some penny sleeves those are like the do not suffocate bags from when i sold on amazon i still use those occasionally at the booth more boxes um some pictures I gotta scan, family pictures, uh, just like some laminate stuff, paper, pricing stickers, thank you cards, Christmas cards, birthday cards. I send out lots of cards, <laughs> not just sports cards, sometimes green cards. And these Legos, I gotta sell those off at some point. I might just throw them back up on Amazon at Christmas time. I don't know yet. Um, and then that's my, uh, what's it called? It's, a, it's an orange monkey folio or something like that. It's, um, so my photo booth so i have all the cables right there next to the outlet i can set it up right here on the table when i need to take those photos um but yeah that's that's the whole operation now these days and as cards come in they get processed immediately and they end up in those boxes and then they end up in this bin and at the post office that's the goal thanks for watching glad to see you made it to the end of the video here if you have any questions or suggestions for videos, leave them in the comments. Always looking for, for good ideas. I don't want to repeat myself, and I want to make sure that the stuff that I'm sharing is valuable to you guys. So let me know what you think in the, in the comments. And uh, yeah, this is a little sneak peek for making it to the end of the video. You get to see what I'm working on for the next one. Uh, this is going to kind of show you, like, all right, you know what the automation tools are from the last video. So what do you buy with those automation tools? How, when you're using them, what are you looking for to, to get? And this is going to help you kind of think about that for your business and figure out what you need your margins to be to make it worth it for you. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's going to be a good one. I'm excited for it. Anyway, thanks again. Have a good one.